Hey everyone and welcome back to today's video. Today I'm going to take you through how to create a cottagecore kitchen. So let's start off with the basics, the main things you need to consider when you're first planning or beginning your kitchen design. The first thing you want to do is pick a colour scheme, then you want to choose a cottagecore aesthetic, and then you want to consider your existing components. What I mean by these is a colour scheme obviously coming up with a vague idea of what you want to purchase to make sure it all matches up nicely at the end. The cottagecore aesthetic, basically cottagecore can be divided into light cottagecore, dark cottagecore. It has some subcategories, what people would consider subcategories like fairy core and that sort of thing. So you want to sort of decide if you want to align with any of these. There's farm style, uh, city style, that sort of thing. So you just consider whether you might be interested in this before you embark on changing anything. And then the third thing is you want to consider existing components. What do you already own? What color scheme is your kitchen currently? Are you going to revamp the entire kitchen or are you just going to buy a few extra pieces? Just consider what you already have and your budget. All right, so the base of your kitchen is obviously completely up to you, but I'm just going to go through a few ideas that you can use if you would like. So if you're going for a farm style cottage core kitchen, you really want to incorporate copper, metal, some wood, and you really want to be focusing on those muted autumnal tones. You just want to make it very cozy and have that rustic feel. Alternatively, if you're going for that more chic sort of pop of color pastel style, you can add things in. You really want to focus on white or black, depending on whether you're light or dark cottage core. And then you want to build off this with pops of color. You still want to have a bit of wood in there. You still do want to focus on maybe some glass, maybe a bit of metal, just to add that cottage core feel. But really, you can play with color a lot more with this. So jumping into the contents of your kitchen, what I am referring to here is things like your pots, your pans, your appliances, all that sort of stuff. So once you have your color theme, I would really recommend that you don't go out and buy a huge amount of stuff. Obviously, cottage core is all about being mindful of what you're spending and, you know, working with what you have. So it's often best and financially a little bit safer to build things up slowly as you see them. You know, you might see something on sale or you might just be wandering through a store one day and think, oh, that's really nice. That will work with my kitchen really well. So don't just immediately go out and buy things, you know, really think about stuff. But let's also analyze what you might want to look for when you do go buy things. Let's divide our kitchen into two. So I'm going to talk about non-formal contents first and then we'll talk about formal. So by non-formal, I'm referring to things like your everyday utensils, plates, cups, mugs, etc. And your baking uh, appliances, baking trays, baking plates, all that sort of thing. So you really want to focus on ceramics. So you can get most of these things actually just cheaply as well. But I personally really enjoy thrifting. So going to a local thrift store and trying to find some of these things can be really great. You can get some really beautiful little pieces and they're generally a lot more economical than buying them new, though, of course, feel free to buy them new. A tip from me, if you are buying new, cottagecore is often classed as French style. So if you see something that's classed as French, it's probably got a cottagecore element to it. Anything that looks handmade or just has a rustic feel, that's probably going to fit in really nicely in your kitchen. So what should you actually buy or have on hand? Obviously, you want a nice set of dinner plates. I personally really like to go for white ones, and I like the ones that are flat with a lip or slightly curved. It just makes plating uh, easier, and it generally looks a little bit more elegant. You're going to want a few mugs. It's really great if these are part of a set. You can easily get a set from a thrift store. You can get a tea set. I actually, in my family, have two tea sets. So we have the everyday one and then we have the more formal one. And that works really, really well. You're obviously going to want some eating utensils. Metal utensils are generally the way to go. With cups, when it comes to glass, you really want to go for something fairly simple. Try and avoid anything that is highly colored because it tends to look a bit tacky and it doesn't really go with the cottage core aesthetic but obviously that is completely up to you that's just my opinion with things like baking dishes we really want to focus on things like cast iron if you can or ceramics uh sometimes copper that sort of thing now obviously do be careful with uh, regulations especially if you're thrifting some historical pieces will not be properly made for 
consu- like using for foods that are going to be consumed just because over the years obviously things have developed and new regulations have been put in place and some of the coatings on certain pans aren't safe so sometimes when it comes to this sort of thing it is recommended to do a lot of research beforehand the general rules I'll give to you now just so that if you are thrifting you have an idea but generally when it comes to historic pieces they're more for decoration rather than actual use um you can use some of them but obviously some of them will have toxic coatings or the uh, metal might start leaching or something like that just a quick note on formal pieces so you can get a lot of really beautiful pieces for your kitchen so things like vintage teaspoons you can find these really easily in thrift stores and they're very cute you can get vintage serveware or new serveware that looks very cottage corey. it can often have things like fruits and vegetables on it or cute little things like I think there's Peter Rabbit dishes quite a lot which are very cute that sort of thing or if you want to go for a more classy simplistic look you can get those French style as I was talking about earlier you can really just play around with your serveware but it's really nice to have some that is just put to the side that you really only use on special occasions or with guests so here are some aesthetic ideas for your kitchen to finish up flowers you can have a vase of fresh flowers windowsill herbs this is actually really handy because if you're in the middle of cooking something and you suddenly realize you need a herb you can really quickly snip it or just grab it off simmer pots i'll pop a recipe in now basically this is where you have a pot of water simmering on the stove for a few hours or as long as you wish and it's a really natural way to just infuse the room especially if you want to get a certain scent and you don't want to have to bake it or something like that alternatively you can use a diffuser pop some essential oil in there that can be a really lovely way to scent a room stove top kettles these are just really cute there's really no other reason for them aside from the fact that i just think they're adorable and i would highly recommend if you're going for that cottage core look tablecloths simplistic light tablecloths or dark depending on your preference can really add to that cottage core feeling and they just sort of give, especially if you're trying to achieve a farmhouse sort of country style, they really add that to a room. Wall art, I think a lot of people underestimate how much this can really enhance the cottagecore feel of a kitchen. Homemade preserves, if you're crafty or maybe you aren't crafty and you just rather purchase some and pop them on the sill. These are actually really great for enhancing that cottage core feeling. Use mason jars as containers. I go on and on about mason jars because they are such an asset. They're super cheap. You can pick them up at pretty much any thrift store for a dollar and they are great sturdy jars. They're not going to tip over and they really just provide that cottage core aesthetic. And on that same train of thought, any sort of vintage jar works really well, old flower containers. If you can and you're looking at completely redoing the kitchen, adding some rustic furniture, so rustic bar stools or that sort of thing really adds a lot. Baskets, 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 baskets. You'll hear me go on about this all the time. These are really great, especially if you want to maybe put some fresh fruit or vegetables in them. It really just adds that look. Even if you live in the middle of the city, we can pretend that we've been out foraging. And finally, lights. I feel like people really underestimate the power of lights, especially at night. Having some really nice fairy lights up around the kitchen is just going to add an ambiance and it's really going to encapsulate that cottage core sort of back garden feeling, which can be really lovely, especially if you have guests. So I hope this gave you some ideas on how you can create your own cottage core kitchen and I'll see you guys all next time.